Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. And there is definitely a stigma out there that celebrities, especially people young with money, are going to blow it. They're going to be financially irresponsible. And the worst of it is child actors. Not only do they come into a lot of money very quickly without the experience to handle it, but they also have parents that tend to take advantage of the situation, spend a lot of it, and leave them with almost nothing. Like there's something called the Coogan account that was basically put in place to prevent the parents from going and taking all the money while the kid's underage. And uh, that basically just requires the parents to keep 15%. It's barely anything. So if you make a million dollars, the kids are keeping 15% of that. I believe it's before taxes. So they're not gonna end up with as much money as they actually made. Now, in this case, I think we have an exception, and that would be Frankie Muniz from, uh, gosh, why am I? Malcolm in the middle, I'm blanking here. I'm blanking here, it's, I'm, I'm tired and uh, I'm making reaction videos. So with that said, I wanna comment on this clip from uh, Steve-O's Wild Ride as soon as you hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you so much, now let's begin. You, you know? said 12 to 20, mm -hmm. so eight or nine years. We, how many, it how was seven seasons, 151 episodes, um, but wow. over yeah, those years, so. So, and that was like network television, when network television was still like, yeah, yeah. you know. Frankie Muniz, by the way, Malcolm in the Middle, for those that didn't grow up with that, the show was huge. It was so wildly successful that they would play prime time when kids would get off from school. Malcolm in the Middle would be playing when like the whole family is home and eating dinner. It would be like Malcolm in the Middle. Not only did it play at the best times possible, but it was also one of the most successful sitcom shows. I mean, my gosh. And Frankie Muniz was like the main star. He, the whole show was about him. So he was... Uh, such a, a pinnacle of child stardom, and then he parlayed that into movies. Plenty of big movies out there that were actually good. It wasn't like a, a child actor on TV just going and doing movies for the sake of doing movies. He was a great actor, and they're great movies. And they call and they're like, you're Malcolm. So you get the pilot, you film the pilot, you know, and you think there's what, of 200 right. pilots a year, right. six or seven get picked up, and then what they get picked up and only Two of those make it past episode sure. seven. Yeah, the odds were definitely stacked against them. I mean, when you think of how many shows they really film that actually go to a network, it's so small. So I could see from his perspective, he's doing these auditions all the time and most of them are never gonna pan out. So what is it, a one in a hundred chance that you happen to be in the right place at the right time with the right audition and the right headspace, say the right things to get picked up by the right network and have it do so unbelievably well it's slim. So I could see why he's like, listen, I have a better chance at doing the pizza commercial. Uh, I maybe got a 50% chance of that or a 1% chance of this. Well, did you know what channel it was going to be on? It was on Fox. It, we knew it was going to be uh, it was a Fox Everybody's going to watch that shit. Dude. Well, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. You know, and, and the first episode aired and 23 million people tuned in. Oh, fuck. And Jesus. then they re-aired it on Wednesday and 28 million people tuned in. Wow. You know what I mean? That's, that's insane. You know, the TV days are, you know... It's been a long time since I really actually watched TV, like a very long time. I don't think since, you know, probably 10 plus years since I sat down and watched a TV show. But Malcolm in the Middle is, it, to me, it was very similar to like the kids' version of The Office, you know? It's just a great television show. And to have 23 million people sitting in and watching a 30 minute episode on primetime TV, that's huge. I mean, that would probably be the equivalent of a YouTube video getting like 500 million views. Because for TV, there's something different. When you sit down and watch a TV show with the whole family's watching it, and you you know commercials come on, you go to the kitchen to get some food and grab a drink or whatever. It's just different times. It's like you internalize the content a lot more than when you're like scrolling through on YouTube or watching TikTok. Was your mom like managing your career and stuff? Yeah, I don't know if she ever fully took on that label or that role, but like it was, you know, I when I was a kid, I'd go from football practice to a baseball game to you know auditions to tap and jazz club, whatever it was yeah it sounds like he has a great family a great support system and it could go one of two ways either you have a parent who's super involved knows what they're doing and looks out for the best interest of their child or you have a parent that uses their child to go and do all the things that they wish they could have done when they were younger but couldn't so you hope that you don't get that second type of parent and that they really put the child first. A check from Fox doesn't go to me. Whatever the percentage is, I, I forget what it is, goes to a trust. Like it goes right. into like an account that you can't touch until you're 18. It's unbelievable that they, they passed a law to say that parents can only blow 85%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now here's the thing, okay? Because uh, 
I get why they put it in place, and I kind of understand the 15% thing, because for a parent to be, uh, you know, almost acting as a manager for the child, you would assume that the parent would be giving up their full-time job. You would assume that the parent would also be acting as a manager. The parent would also be acting as a chauffeur. The parent would also be acting, uh, you know, as a supervisor. There's so many things, so many roles a parent would have to fill. And then you also have to think, who's paying for travel? Where does that travel money come out of? If he's going and filming in certain locations, it's probably coming out of his pocket. If he needs to be driven somewhere, that's probably coming out of his pocket. So who's gonna pay for these things? It could be very expensive. So they kind of say, as a blanket, 85% of the stuff that you make is gonna be paying all these services and things, and if your parent is acting as the guardian for all of that, it could go to them, and they could divvy it out as they want to. Or if they could save it 100% if they can. But that's why. I also read, maybe this isn't true, because I read a lot, but like, uh, you never really got into drugs or drinking or anything like that. I've, I've never, drank i've never done anything uh at all so Dude, you could have blown rules. a lot there and like I, did and life I grew ever up get at crazy 15, 16 years old going to the playboy mansion every night so oh, yeah that must have taken a lot of self-control you know imagine you're like 16 years old a lot of your friends are i'm sure going out doing this you have all the resources in the world to turn that down and say no i want to focus on my mental well-being i want to focus on work uh i want to stay on the right path you know when you're young i'm sure it's very tempting so props off for him. It, it seems like he was raised right. He's got a great foundation and he's going with it. I was never the type of person where I was like, oh, I, I got to think strategically. It was more like, oh, this seems cool. And like I'd buy a house or like, you know, a, a, I had a bunch of houses at one time and the market went crazy. So I made a ton of money on them. You know what I mean? And, right. But it was never like, uh, you know, people, I, I own some parking lots in downtown LA. <laughs> wow. So I did really well there. So the stuff like that. You still but, have them? No, I sold them in 2006. Oh, okay, so for those that don't understand downtown LA, now it's like where the Staples Center is, like huge arenas, big buildings. I'm talking like skyscrapers. And back when he bought parking lots, I'm sure now it's like the Ritz Carlton is there. So he bought mounds of dirt, essentially. Because that's all it is. A lot of these parking lots are just basically a big mound of dirt, and you hire a guy there, 15 bucks an hour, and he's waving cars in, you have to pay 20 bucks an hour to park there. Very expensive. So for him, uh, selling in 2006 was, was a better time to sell than probably 2012, but had he held on to them, my gosh, it, they're, they're probably worth 30 times what he paid for them. Downtown LA just skyrocketed in value. I wish I had them now, because then they'd be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. It was like an apartment <laughs> building built there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2006 yeah, okay. was a pretty good time to get out. Yes, well, yes, in the sense that right before the big yeah. housing crisis yeah. that we were talking about. But if you but still had it now. If you still had it now, like now it's... Uh, man, you, you can never look back and be like, oh, I wish I had just held it, if only I didn't sell. Because the thing is, it's like when he sold in... 2006, he looked like a genius. He timed it perfectly. But when you look back even further, it's like, oh man, that he, he would, you know what's funny? The funny thing is that if he held on to those parking lots, he would probably have made more money holding on to parking lots than he would throughout his entire career in acting. Let that sink in for a second. I think even Kobe Bryant uh, was one of those cases where he made more money from investing than he did from his entire basketball career. I'm sure same with 50 Cent. He made more money from his business investments than he did from his music. There's so many cases where you have some really famous, uh, really good in their field, but they make more money from their investments with a few really good ones. So just to show you, just, you know, you gotta hit one thing once. Even if you're only charged, I would go like, even if you're only charging $5 a car, which people down here are charging $20 to park, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? We could be the cheap lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're gonna have people all day coming through and I don't know, I just, Makes sense. I just did. So let me know what you guys think of this down below in the comment section. I know it's a shorter video, but uh, I think it's really interesting. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget that you can get some free fractional shares with an affiliate link down below in the description. I do get a commission on that, but you could get some free fractional shares that are worth all the way up to like $1,000. So enjoy, let me know what stocks you get. Thank you so much, and until next time.